Hey gang, Scott here. This video is part of a mini series about masking with on one tools. And in this installment, I want to cover very specifically opacity versus flow. The last video in the series, the masking brush introduced that. And I was about to dive into this and realize I wanted to carve it out and make it a separate lesson because I think it's a, a common enough question that you know this video in and of itself will be a, a nice reference for you. But uh, let me explain the difference between opacity and flow. This will make a lot more sense if you've watched the masking brush video. So if you haven't checked that out, go ahead and watch that one. But uh, here I've got this uh, filter. It doesn't really matter what I have here. I have just a, a pure white mask. I have my brush set to paint out. And I want to show you the difference between opacity and flow. Now to recap uh, from the previous masking brush video, so opacity is kind of like your upper limit. Uh, I want the mask to be you know, no more uh, strong, no more stronger than whatever I set opacity to. And flow is kind of how quickly do you get there. So let me show you that in action. So let's set the flow 100% and the opacity maximum at 70. So I do a brush stroke and that's what I get, right? I get a 70% brush stroke because the flow how much uh, virtual paint is coming out of my brush is at full strength. What if I set that flow halfway and I do that same brush stroke? You kind of see how it more slowly, I'm not painting right now, I'm pointing, it more slowly builds up, gets filled, and then as I taper off, it slows down. Well, if I get that flow going even lower, you know, you'll see the same kind of thing right? It just slows down. So that's generally how flow works. Now I'm going to do this last brush stroke again, but much more slowly. And the reason is I want you to really pay attention to what is going on with the brush and, and pay attention to how the, uh, like the, the mask itself starts to appear. So let me reset the screen there and I'll make the size of the brush a little bit bigger. I'm going to brush very slowly and just now watch. I've clicked once and I'm starting to move. And then it showed up again, and then it showed up again, and it showed up again. It's kind of like this little staccato uh, application. And of course, we saw in the masking brush video that brush strokes are additive. And so that's how the brush is building up this low flow mask. It's periodically considering you're dropping the brush. It's almost like if I did this. Um, if I click once and then I move and I click once and then I move and I click once and then I move and you can see that the mask gets built up. But that's also my, my version of that trying to single click my way across. You can see it's kind of splotchy and choppy and not so good. Reset. But with that flow, as I move, the tool will automatically drop uh, another brush stroke for me, building up that mask. So now, what if you don't like the pace that this flow is coming out? You know, the, the, the decision that on one is making to put things out, there's a control for that. Manual spacing. So I'll open up the gear menu, and I've got this quirk when I, when I do recording and I'm running full screen that my pop-up shows over on the left, but this is normally right underneath the gear menu. You'll see manual spacing. And let me change that all the way down to the low end, let's say 14. Okay, make my brush a little bit smaller here. And I'll brush slowly again, clicking once and moving the brush. And there's a spot, there's a spot, there's a spot, there's a spot. That lower number means that the repeated brush strokes, that little metronome tick that on one is doing each time I brush is faster, right? That manual spacing number, when it's low, that means less time between brush strokes. Now, if I push it all the way over to something like, yeah, this is going to be uh, ludicrously bad, but 95, and I do that same thing, click, and I'm dragging, and I'm dragging, and I'm dragging, and I'm dragging, click. It did, sorry, not a click. I'm not doing the click. Uh, on one's doing the click. You can see that it's making this pattern there. The manual spacing is really, really large. And it, it just spreads these things out to the point that this is a, a ludicrous 
mask. This is a bad mask. It could be useful for a custom brush, which is more often where I would use these controls, honestly, with a custom brush, where if I have a brush and I want a pattern of whatever that brush is, that's where a manual spacing of something really large could be helpful. But for flow, generally, I found that that default setting at 50, right there, I'll just even just turn off manual spacing at that point, is pretty good. That's a nice, you know, with, with, with especially with like, a, you know, doing do a, a very detailed level of mass, something very soft and smooth. It's, it's good at, at 50, you know, you know, maybe reducing it to, or sorry, increasing it to, uh, to 60 or so forth. But remember this one right here, that was my original 50% slow and steady drag right across things. So that is the difference between opacity and flow. And so when you need to do that very gentle brush work, reduce flow and just work slowly. Use that brush slowly. You can, you can see, you can see when that mask is getting built up there. I hope that demystifies opacity versus flow in the brush tool. And if you got questions, go ahead and drop them below. Until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.